EQT, America's largest producer of natural gas, announced this morning that by the end of the year, more than half of the gas that it'll be selling will be considered certified natural gas. This is similar to Chesapeake, who announced a couple days ago that it was doing a pilot project with Project Canary that will certify some of its pads as producing RSG, responsibly sourced natural gas. EQT did the same thing a couple months ago. It certified some of its pads as RSG pads, responsibly sourced natural gas, which begs the question, what's the difference between regular natural gas and responsibly sourced natural gas, RSG, certified natural gas, whatever you want to call it. And so I want to take a minute to show you the difference if you don't know what they are, because regular natural gas is comprised mostly of methane and it has a carbon atom in the middle and then four hydrogen atoms. So CH4, this is regular natural gas, whereas certified natural gas or RSG has a carbon atom in the middle and then again, four hydrogen atoms around it. And of course, you might be thinking, well, these certainly look the same. But this one, again, is RSG. This is certified. This is responsibly sourced. So if you think these things are equal, you're wrong. There's a difference. And that difference is, of course, that these molecules here are getting all of the credit and all of the labels and everything that EQT is doing and Turn Chesapeake is doing to ensure that the way that they're getting it out of the ground is responsible. And what that means is they're allowed to call themselves responsibly sourced natural gas producers. Much in the same way, if you go into the grocery store and you're looking at bananas, you'll find this conventional banana available for 49 cents a pound and this organic banana here available for 69 cents a pound. And the difference between the two is essentially just the label. This organic one here also happens to be fair trade certified. So of course that bumps up the value. But in reality, a 41% difference between these two bananas that are going to have the same molecular structure, much as the methane here has the same molecular structure. They're going to taste the same. Maybe there's less chemicals or pesticides on the outside of the conventional one, but otherwise they're essentially the same. And this whole situation, if you will, is a great parallel for you, whether you are in transition, trying to find a new job, or whether you're a firmly established leader, because the important thing is that you don't want to be commoditized. But in this landscape of constantly consolidating companies in the oil and gas industry, the reality is that more and more, everyone and virtually every company is essentially becoming more and more commoditized. And you're having to differentiate yourself. And EQT did a very good job of getting credit for what it's already doing to differentiate itself in a commodity business. And so I want to take a couple minutes to ask a couple questions of you, whether, again, you're in transition and you're trying to differentiate yourself from all of your fellow job seekers, or whether you are an existing leader to make sure that you are differentiating yourself and you are ensuring that your stakeholders understand that you are providing or can provide a differentiated value. Because this comes up all the time for people that are seeking new jobs. When I work with people, the first thing we do is ensure that you're getting credit for what you're already doing. EQT is already producing gas responsibly. The molecules they're producing are no different, but by getting the certification, they're going to get full credit for what they're doing. Similarly, if you're putting together a resume, any resume expert is going to tell you, of course, to make sure you highlight the things that are most important. Because if you're a reservoir, reservoir engineer who's you know, competing with several hundred other reservoir engineers for a single job, clearly you want to make sure that you stand out. Or if you're in... Strategic sourcing, uh, for example, or supply chain. Unfortunately, you know how supply and demand works. And again, if there's hundreds of applicants for a single role, well, you're going to have to make yourself stand out or else you're going to be seen by a hiring manager as just a commodity who's going to be able to provide the same value as, as anyone else. And so too, for me, as a coach, there's millions of coaches out there. So I need to, of course, make sure that I can differentiate my background, my skill set, my results, the insights I can provide from all of the other coaches that are out there trying to do similar things. And while, again, this makes a lot of sense when you're putting together a resume, it's even more important for you if you're an established leader. If you're the CEO, example, for example, of a company who's, again, pretty well established, you still can't be complacent and kid yourself into thinking that all of your stakeholders aren't at some point saying, hey, this, this man or woman, are they really that much better than some other leader that I can pull off the shelf? And as we consolidate or as we look to, you know, maybe uh, save a couple dollars, can this person just be cast off to the side and bring in somebody else who could do something similar? And obviously, you want to ask those questions, not just from a self-preservation standpoint to make sure that, hey, you know, you're, you're not being seen as a mere commodity, but 
the second, third, fourth degree impacts of having a leader who is seen as, as no different from any other leader are real. Whether you're talking about customers or your employees or your investors or your board of directors, as soon as they start questioning whether or not you really are differentiated from all the other leaders out there, you're asking for trouble. Because the confidence in your company, the confidence in your individual employees, it all will start to degrade. And before trying to you know, reinvent yourself, you know, reimagine yourself, uh, put on some fancy new hat, figuratively at least, and pretend like you're, you really are something different, the first thing you need to do is ensure that you're getting full credit for what you're doing already. And for all those things that do make you a different leader or a different company. And in so doing, you're going to get full credit for the investments you've already made. And in many ways, that's the difference between coaching and advising. As a coach, I don't go in and try to tell somebody to change their molecular structure or their DNA. No, the first thing we do is try to extract what you're already doing and make sure that you're getting full credit for it instead of coming in and spending you know, seven figures on some major initiative to reinvent yourself when maybe what you need to do is just change the label a little bit. You know, get get that get that organic label instead of the uh, inorganic label, and make sure you're you're getting full credit for what you're already doing. And so, whether you're a leader, whether you're in career transition, ask yourself: Are you getting full credit for what you're doing? Are you trying to differentiate yourself and your company, or are you just going to follow along and start doing all of the RSG and ESG things that everyone else is going to be doing, which of course will not differentiate you? Because companies like EQT are going to continue to evolve and they're going to be ahead of the game and they're going to continue differentiating themselves in a commodity business and therefore making more money, being more successful, being more profitable, doing things more sustainably, not just from an environmental standpoint, but from a business standpoint. And so too, for you as an individual leader, as an individual contributor, what can you do to ensure that how you're approaching things is more sustainable and ensuring that you are indeed seen as a differentiated commodity. So with that, ask yourself, how are you differentiating yourself from others? How is what you're doing already being seen by others? And if it's not, how can you ensure that it is being seen? And regardless of your answers to all of those questions, the most important thing I want you to remember today is that all natural gas, in fact, all fossil fuels by nature of these evil carbon atoms are in fact organic and energy.